Joe Rogan, Cat Williams sat down for a three-hour conversation talking about God, the supernatural, demons, devils, creation, NASA, the Bible, Sodom and Gomorrah, all the things. It was crazy. We're going to get into some of the highlights from this conversation and a practical takeaway and Cat Williams actually quoting a Bible verse to Joe Rogan. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. Now, I got to give you guys a heads up. There may be a little bit of language in this, so... Had your kids, had your wife. Explicit, explicit, explicit. And I want to make sure that you guys know, those of you guys that are watching this, I'm making this video live, which means that there is going to be me reacting to the video. Now, I'm going to have to stop and interject because that's how fair use works. I can't just play extended clips of a video because the people that represent Joe Rogan's content on YouTube will come after me and try to get the video uh, taken down or claim the AdSense. So we're going to be interrupting because that's what I'm supposed to do as a commentator. 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 Uh, so just heads up, if you guys are watching this, we are watching the replay, I'm like, why do you keep interrupting? Go watch the original daggone video if you don't want to hear my commentary, you goobers. All right, let's jump into this video. The entire uh, conversation is really interesting. 13 minutes in, Cat Williams uh, brings up God, and it really is driven there. Now, I'm going to have some really practical takeaways, uh, a Bible verse that we're going to look at the Cat Williams quotes, and ultimately where I think all of this is going. So let's just open up 13 minutes. This is really fascinating. Uh, we're going to look at a lot of clips kind of highlighting this entire conversation. Check this out. The fact that there is a God is the biggest conversation worldwide, but the truth of the matter is, there is more reason for you to believe there is a God than there is for you to not. And there is where the conversation starts going, the direction of is there a God, is there not a God? And Rogan seemingly in this conversation really affirms that there is a God, that there's a creation story. He admits to reading the Bible, all sorts of stuff. Now, Cat Williams talks about something that is very controversial, and it's about how he believes there's proof of God through technology in a way. Listen to what he says at 44 minutes. And you guys really should go watch the entire conversation. We're not going to go over all of it. I'm just showing you some of the timestamps that really stood out to me. Check this out. Well, that's why NASA and Space Force are not more forthcoming, because the further you get in space, the more obvious shit is. Like, once you're up there and you're looking down, this shit doesn't look like there is no God. It looks like you're in the middle of somebody's workshop and they just showed you every single way that every star can be made, every single way a planet can be made, every way that a black hole can be, a galaxy, a universe, and then showed you the best of the best. <laughs> so, Cat Williams opens up 13 minutes. There is a God. This is a fact. Then he says, this is why NASA is not more forthcoming. Very controversial. And in saying that, uh, basically points to how NASA is proving that there is a God based on how space looks when you go into space. Okay, very controversial stuff. Now check out uh, where the conversation takes a turn as they start getting into the topic of good and evil. Listen. You think about what, what people have always believed. That's why angels and devils freak me out. Mm. Because no one wants to believe that there's a Satan, that there's a devil. You believe in astronauts though, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Shot, shot, shots fired at NASA. You believe in, you don't want to believe in Satan, but you believe in, believe in astronauts. I, that's, that's hilarious, especially, never mind. <laughs> <I'm gonna> go <laughs> there. But people have always said there is. You mean a bad and a good? Yeah, not just a bad and a good, but an actual evil malevolent force. No, just start with bad okay, and yes, good. Bad okay, and good, so yeah. if we started bad and good, then we understand what must be at the extremes of that. And this is why I think so many people have been coming to faith lately, and I'm going to break it down into three categories, what I believe to be three categories in a minute, that I think has been started by people acknowledging that there is evil in the world, and because people acknowledge that there's evil in the world, they then move along the spectrum of this, okay? So bear with me while I get there, and remember, I got one Bible verse that Kat is going to quote at Joe Rogan here in a second. Okay, so this is an hour and eight minutes. Cat Williams references, Cat Williams and Rogan reference the fine tuning 
of the universe, okay? Cat Williams persuading Rogan to become a theist is not something that I had on my 2024 bingo card. But listen close. It's bananas. Our perfect there. habitat is so perfect that anyone universally with sense would say, whew, location, location, location. <laughs> You know? It's like the greatest real estate agent yeah. ever. If the moon or the sun were further back, we'd we'd be fucked. Yeah, or clo or there. closer. Or like like yeah. the whole thing is, you know, someone later saying, <clears throat> "Do you think Beverly Hills was? Uh, you think this was an area they built on purpose?" <laughs> so that is fascinating because what he's laying out is actually the fine tuning of the universe argument. OK, and if you guys are into apologetics, he may not have the language or the vernacular to say it's the fine tuning of the universe, but that's actually what he's pointing out. Right um, now, let's go to an hour and 29 minutes. Rogan makes a brilliant point that I think all of us would agree with that is connected to the gospel. But we'll get more in, into that in a minute. Life would change forever if you had undeniable contact with something. Now. They're talking about in the context of potentially aliens, something extraterrestrial, but he's also talking about the potential of God and the creator and something supernatural, which then comes back around. So Rogan, rightfully so, makes the claim that if you had contact with something otherworldly, then life would change forever. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, guys, do me a favor, smash that like button. It really means the world to me if you uh, subscribe uh, with us and hit that like button as well. Okay, so now let's move on to... The part where it starts to get really interesting. Okay, now, Rogan admits to reading the Bible the previous night and asks Cat Williams one of the most controversial, about one of the most controversial Bible passages. And you see Cat Williams being extremely uh, resistant to wanting to go into this topic. Listen, listen very closely. What do you think the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is about? Because I was just reading that last cleanliness. night. He said cleanliness. Cleanliness. Okay. And, and notice Rogan said, I was just reading that last night. So Rogan is up before he sits down with Cat Williams previous night. And he's sitting down reading the Bible. Now, I don't know if he has a Bible, that like a physical Bible someone gave him, or if he's just reading on his phone. But he is reading the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, trying to figure out what it's about. Cat Williams says cleanliness which is one of the views that Sodom and Gomorrah was really about their lack of hospitality. Obviously, most of us would read it and go, yeah, it's because they were wild and there was some sinful stuff going on. Those are the kind of two interpretations. They unpack that. Cat Williams was like, look, man, you're going to get me canceled. I don't want to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah because that's the passage that people usually say is against the LGTV community. Okay, but we're not going to go too deep on that in this video. Now, at... Two hours and seven seconds is when Cat Williams subtly quotes the Bible to Joe Rogan. And we're going to look at that passage here in just a second. Listen to, listen to this. Uh, well, isn't that odd, though, yeah, that yeah. a creature, if you think of human beings as a creature, mm -hmm. that a, a, a human being that's never created a being itself has this idea that a magical force that is all-knowing and all-loving created, cre not not they evolved, not they came from this and they learned, they got better, but that they were created. And that so Rogan, leaning into the creation story, and listen to Cat Williams' uh, response. That seems like a universal story, the created story. That's only because the duck that's outside of my house right now believes that. So the, what? The, so the <laughs> duck is sitting on six eggs on a nest right by the house, uh -huh. right? It's, it's brilliant that he's talking about his duck and he's using his duck as a parallel on why we all intrinsically believe that we were created. Listen close. By a 250-pound dog, an alibi, um, and believes that it has life that it's sitting on mm -hmm. and it's going to come from that <laughs> and that there's somebody there that looks out for them. And yeah. Make sure they're fed. And it, the, in the Bible story, it says... Listen. Um, the sparrow said, like, like Jesus said, who, who feeds the sparrows? Like, like, world. Who feeds the sparrows? What is he referencing? Did you guys catch it? He's referencing Matthew chapter 6. Look at the birds of the air. This is verse 26. 
They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, um, by worrying, add a single hour to your day? And why do you worry about clothes? So Cat Williams is referencing this idea that Jesus is explaining in Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, as he goes on on why you shouldn't worry. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spot. It's very, very, very fascinating that he quoted that verse back with regards to the sparrow and God providing for the sparrows. Now, here it gets even more interesting. Listen closely. What do you think? Why do you think people have a reluctance to take in the idea of a creator? Like, what do you think about mm. it to them? Is There's some people that fancy themselves as intellectuals and they refuse to take in a concept for which there's no proof. And that's Listen. what they'll say. They use this very uh, reductionist view of what God is and they'll say there's no proof. And that, you know, they're a staunch atheist. And a lot of them, they even talk like religious people. They, they... The atheists, according to Joe Rogan, the atheists talk like religious people. Okay. Put a pin in that. Because we're going to come back to that point in just a minute. Put a pin in that because we're going to come back to that point. So Rogan is making the acknowledgement that a lot of the stuff that we're seeing from the new atheists actually has become its own religion. Okay, now again, go watch the full interview. I can't play too many of these clips, but you really should watch the full interview. I mean, listen, God can definitely use crooked lines to make uh, crooked sticks. God can make God can use crooked sticks to make perfect lines. Okay, and so I think what's happening here is that these guys are asking these things, and it reminds me of when I was first starting to think about God, and I was thinking about uh, the Creator, and I was thinking about all these things, and. In my pursuit of this, we were having initial conversations about this similar to Cat and Joe. We were smoking weed. We were talking. We were thinking about the universe and the rapture and demons and devils and all this stuff, the occult. This is how my first conversation was. So I, I, I greatly relate to how this is came coming about. Now, listen to um, this is uh, two hours and 20 minutes. Conversation of creation comes up yet again. And Cat Williams talks about his duck yet again. And life is going to come from yeah. that. Right. Uh, what I mean is that that God created everything and that there's that there really is a, a reason for all of it. What is the reason for us? What a great question. What is the reason for us? So many interesting questions that Rogan is asking. If there is a God, why did he create us? And Cat Williams basically answers, again, I can't go into all the clips, but, but he basically answers that even if you aren't grateful, I'm grateful, and I think we first start with gratitude. That's Cat Williams' response. God created us, and we're grateful, and there's an experience, and I'm just grateful that I get to play this, I, I this game called Life, and uh, I'm grateful. He, he parallels it to Call of Duty, and he says, I'm, just, I'm grateful for whoever created Call of Duty because I like my experience in that game, and that's where I really want to be. And he basically parallels life to that. So starting out with gratitude, okay, starting out with gratitude. Now, Again, we're going to get into something here in just a second. We already covered the Bible, covered the Bible verse, but listen to where Cat Williams kind of lands the plane regarding to all this talk of God, all these things. And I'm going to give you guys three different viewpoints that are being expressed here. Listen very closely to Cat Williams. You either believe in the natural and the supernatural or you don't. And there are facets to everything. So if you don't believe in anything supernatural, then I would assume that means you don't believe in God either. Mm. Okay, that's what this whole conversation comes down to. The conversation happening in culture right now is shifting. Why is it shifting? Well, because there's three categories of people. Category number one, it would be the staunch new atheists that Joe Rogan rightfully so pointed out have become their own religion. They thought the world would get better if we took God out of things, secular humanism. This is the Sam Harris types, th those types of folks right? Christopher Hitchens, the new atheist. What happened? Well, the more we pulled God and faith out of the culture, the more we got some of the goofiness that we see now within culture. And the new atheists don't get it. They don't understand that. But the new atheists, generally speaking, and some agnostic, not all agnostic, but they would say that I don't believe there's a supernatural. I don't believe there's anything beyond this realm. They're materialists. All they see is this realm. Okay, the new atheists are uh, uh, fading. It's kind of a dead movement because we came to the conclusion 
that when you remove God, you remove objective morality. This is one of Jordan Peterson's biggest uh, pushbacks to atheism. You remove God, you remove objective morality, meaning everything becomes subject subjective to your truth, my truth, uh, their truth, the cat's truth, the dog's truth. Uh, you could be a pig if you want to be a pig. You could be whatever you want to be, right? That that that's that's dead in my opinion. That movement is 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 dead because we've came to those conclusions and we know that. That's stupid. Okay. Now, the second position, which is where a lot of people have shifted to, but are starting to rethink it, is a new age supernatural view. They view that God is real, but they will call God the universe. They view that there's there's a supernatural, there's something spiritual. We're beyond just material creatures, but they they don't necessarily follow a traditional view of these things. And there's enough out there that you could see that miracles happen, that the supernatural exists, that we're not just material beings, that there's something spiritual inside of us. And so what, what they have is a new age, spiritualist, Eastern view of things. The universe is God. You're the universe. You're one with the universe. You're one with God. You can be God. That's new age spirituality. Okay. That too gets into the issue of morality being subjective. Well, because if you're God, then why is adultery wrong? Why is stealing wrong, right? You can then create and maneuver however you want to maneuver because ultimately, I was talking to somebody that slides into this and I was telling them how, hey, one of the things that I do my best is to not cheat. And, and we got into cheating what? I said, I don't cheat on my taxes. I pay my taxes because I believe I'm supposed to render on to Caesar. And as an entrepreneur, I'm gonna do everything I can to limit my tax burden. And they said, well, why would you do that? And I said, because it's God math. Because if I don't cheat and I, and I honor God with my finances and I do what I'm supposed to do, well then, I am, 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 am following God's principles. And in their mind, because they're into this new age, I could be God, they don't, they don't get it. Why, why, why not? Why would you not t- cheat? Why would you not lie? Same problem. Morality is subjective. You're God. In both first two worldviews, there's God. Now, the third worldview is those of us that are followers of Jesus. We're Christians. We believe in the supernatural. We believe that heaven meets earth, that, that, that Jesus is, and the incarnation story is how humanity is redeemed because we are spiritual beings, but we're broken because of sin, and we need to be bought back. We need to be redeemed and reconciled back into a place of God. And so the question Joe Rogan asked, why are we here? We are here to know God through being reconciled through Jesus and to make him known. That includes gratitude, as Scott Williams has said, but it, but it goes beyond just gratitude and just being grateful and just thinking good things and just being thankful, that we get to be a part of the redemption process as followers of Jesus, because we were redeemed for much, we get to go out and tell other people about being redeemed. So that's the third category. The fourth category is what we're seeing where they're not atheists, they're not into new age, they're not into, they're they're not quite following Jesus in the sense that they read the Bible every day, they join a local community, they understand that they need to be redeemed, they understand they're saved. But this is this fourth category, and this category has become more and more pervasive throughout our culture. You're going to see more of this, and I think these are folks that are uh, potentially on the cusp, and some of them have fully transitioned over. I would call them seeker, seeker theist. They're not atheists. They're theists. They believe in a creator. They believe God created the universe, but they're theists in the very broad sense that they believe that there's a creator God, that he's personal. They're, they're not deist where they check out, and they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to figure out what does all this mean? What is what is happening? And so they don't fully embrace. Jesus and Christianity, they don't necessarily embrace another religion, but they don't embrace new age woo-woo, and they know that atheism is wrong. And that's where I think a Cat Williams, a Joe Rogan lands, is that they're in that fourth category, and they're trying to figure it out. And in the midst of a conversation about smoking weed, about, about, about drugs, about aliens, about all these crazy things, they're still an acknowledgement that there's something beyond us, that there's a creator that he wants to be personal. And in my opinion, I think this is where a lot of society is going and going to go. That we're going to see much more people move over from atheist to new age or something spiritual, from new age to this fourth category I just described of just theist, where they believe there's something natural but uh, and supernatural, but they're not all the way there yet. And I think the best thing we could do for folks like that is to love them well, to engage in the conversations, to lean into the conversations, and to be equipped to have these conversations. Because I think Kat and Joe are representative of people who are 
all over our lives, sprinkled all over our lives. They're not really ready to go to church with you or have a Bible study yet. However, they are very curious and very interested in terms of these conversations. And I think that's a huge net positive. So shout out to Joe Rogan. Shout out to Cat Williams for having this conversation. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you like, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm out of here. Peace. Love you.